tomorrow morning and on a Sunday morning at a log cabin near Hodgenville, Kentucky. They were expecting a baby. The cabin they lived in, plain like many other pioneer cabins, the floor of packed-down dirt, one small window giving a look out towards sky and weather, one wooden door swung on leather hinges, a fireplace for heat, cooking, and for light at night, a stick clay chimney letting the smoke out. Here, the mother, Nancy Hanks Lincoln, who had married Thomas Lincoln, gave birth that Sunday morning of February 12th, 1809, to a boy baby they named Abraham after a grandfather, Abraham, who had been killed by the Indians. And if any man or woman on that day of February 12th, 1809, had pointed at the newborn baby nursing at his mother's breast and said, this boy will grow up to be a strong and a tall man, a strange friend and a friendly stranger to millions of people. And when he is 52 years old, he will be elected president of the United States of America. And he will be the leader of the people in the bloodiest, ghastliest civil war that any nation of people on the earth has ever seen. Of course, there was no talk like that when Abraham Lincoln was born in that plain, bare, log cabin. It was too far west, and they were pioneer strugglers. Since then, there have been thousands of homes in America where they look at a newborn baby and you can hear them laughing and saying, now when he grows up, maybe he'll be president of the United States. Who knows? You can never tell. This is America, and in America, many a poor boy goes up and up, and nobody can tell how far up. Any boy will go. The name of Abraham Lincoln has gone around the world. More books written about him than any other figure in history except Jesus Christ. His repeated public quotation from the Declaration of Independence in 1776. All men are created equal. Has gone worldwide and he is known and loved as a world spokesman for democracy and freedom for all men everywhere. His Gettysburg speech and his letter to Mrs. Bixby are basic declarations that freedom is worth men's fighting for even to the supreme sacrifice, even to wounds and death as what Lincoln termed in the Gettysburg speech, the last full measure of devotion. We might be asking in the present hour, what is the greatest single result from our civil war related to the present hour of fate and history? It could be that the answer is, we are a united power, united powerful nation, and our power rests chiefly in our unity. Our nation of unbreakable United States is the foremost contender for freedom for all men the world over. If there is a Valhalla, a hall of great heroes conceivable in an afterworld, then we may picture in our imaginations the hands of Abraham Lincoln and Robert E. Lee clasped and shaken in contemplation of the power of the United States of America in the present world struggle. Among ancient and modern architects, 
There is a principle or a proverb. The arch never sleeps. From this we might derive when the arch holds, all else holds. Love stands and hangs by an arch. The rainbow is an arch. Hate and pride break arches. Love and understanding build unbreakable arches. Thank <laughs> you.